a 66 year old male presented to us with sudden loss of vision 6 hours after cataract surgery the operating surgeon diagnosed it as central retinal artery occlusion and referred him to us on examination his vision was just perception of light central retinal artery occlusion is an ocular emergency and is the ocular analog of a cardiovascular stroke it results in profound usually monocular vision loss and is associated with significant functional morbidity hence usually methods like ocular massage with paracentesis and pharmacological therapies are tried studies have however shown that these methods do not show significant amelioration for most patients the same was the case with this patient we then decided to proceed and perform a vitrectomy why was this decision taken this was because 4 years ago a 43 years old female patient had presented to us with central retinal artery occlusion on careful examination we saw an abnormal glial tissue on her optic disc and beneath this tissue the central retinal artery was seen pulsating this tissue was confirmed on an oct we thought that this glial tissue was responsible for the occlusion after vitrectomy when the glial tissue was removed we found to our surprise that the perfusion was restored almost instantaneously her vision was restored to 6 by 12 8 weeks post operatively Based on this experience we decided to do a 25 gauge three port pars plana vitrectomy A low IOP vitrectomy was performed with the IOP set at 8 mm mercury The thickened sheath and the occluded central retinal artery could be visualized A posterior vitreous detachment was induced very carefully since a globe can collapse easily due to the low IOP. The arterial sheath and the central meniscus of Kunt take a faint blue stain with brilliant blue. The arterial sheathotomy with the dissection of the central meniscus of Kunt was done very carefully. from center to periphery in a radial fashion the optic disc dissection is not seen very clearly in this surgery since a light pipe was used instead of a chandelier hence the inset shows a similar step done in another case using a chandelier this dissection also helps us to massage the central retinal artery directly once the glial tissue has been dissected one has to wait patiently for a few seconds the disc then begins to show signs of reperfusion in the form of small hemorrhages on it and then the central retinal artery pulsates back to life the perfusion was restored almost immediately post operatively he recovered 6 by 24 vision Conceptually we can achieve many goals by performing a vitrectomy as a treatment for CRAO by performing a low IOP vitrectomy we can achieve a long term hypotony not only intraoperatively but also postoperatively if we leave the eye hypotonous at the end of the surgery massaging the central retinal artery can also help dislodge an embolus if present if necessary The central retinal artery can be nicked to remove the embolus. We perform disc dissection by opening the central meniscus of Kunt, which is continuous with the peripapillary internal limiting membrane and an arterial sheathotomy to aid the dislodgement of the embolus. As seen earlier, sometimes we find an abnormal glial tissue over the optic disc. Removal of this tissue does restore ocular perfusion. This surgery does help to dislodge the embolus as seen in this case. In this other case of branch retinal artery occlusion having progressive visual loss a low IOP vitrectomy was performed. The disc was dissected at the site of the occlusion. After direct massage of the artery 
the thrombus can be seen migrating to the periphery. This eye recovered very well with the vision improving to 6 by 6 by the 5th post-operative day. Encouraged by this experience, we went ahead and performed the surgery in 18 patients with CRAO and had very positive results. We feel that if the occlusion is at the site where the central retinal artery pierces the dura, this surgery will not be beneficial. However, if the occlusion is around the lamina crib rosa, this surgery will be definitely beneficial. Unfortunately, the paucity of such cases and the urgency to treat them makes a planned study difficult.